Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today's webinar is um, an inventor and AutoCAD with Vault workflow. So mainly focusing on how Vault can be used with uh, Inventor and AutoCAD today and the uh, integration between them. Uh, firstly, a little bit about us, A2K. Um, in combination with our brand partners, uh, CADLINE in the UK, uh, US CAD in the Americas, and Capricot in India, uh, makes us one of the largest Platinum Autodesk partners globally today. So we've got over 550 staff um, across 32 offices. Um, conjunction with our partners covering 25 languages. Uh, some of the things we can provide and not limited to um, data management and integrated solutions, uh, BIM implementations, consulting services, CAD management services, on-site and online training and customized content creation. Uh, a little bit about myself. My name is Sheldon Elsmore Carey. I'm a professional services consultant in the data management and integrated solutions space here at A2K. Uh, I've got 24 years industry experience <coughs> across multiple um, sectors. Sorry, just had some sound issues there. Uh, Specialise in data management, process automation, mechanical and architectural drafting, digital prototyping, uh, design automation and visualisation. <clears throat> so today's uh, webinar agenda, I'm gonna show you how uh, Autodesk's data management software Vault uh, works with particularly AutoCAD and Inventor and how it integrates. I'll do a brief introduction on AutoCAD and Inventor for those that aren't aware of uh, what those products are or do. Um, we'll have an introduction on Vault Professional, <coughs> um, investigate some workflows between Inventor and AutoCAD and vice versa. Uh, and then we'll have a bit a bit more of a, a deeper dive into Vault Professional uh, in particular, how it integrates with Inventor and AutoCAD, a uh, brief overview, and then look at some uh, process automation that can be done with Vault Professional. So firstly, um, <coughs> Autodesk AutoCAD, uh, it's been around for very long time since um, about 1974, I believe. Um, and it, it's mainly used uh, historically for 2D documentation across multiple industries. There's not really a limit to what in industries can utilize <coughs> or they can. Uh, in recent years, Autodesk have introduced industry specific tool sets to go with AutoCAD that give you additional uh, focus tools for uh, specific in industries like architecture or electrical design, um, mechanical design, plant, etc. Um, <clears throat> Uh, AutoCAD can also create 3D uh, solid models. Uh, probably not as, as common uh, in the industry, but with the, the tool sets and the industry specific tool sets, um, 
you can create specific uh, 3D geometry for those industries. Inventor Professional is mainly a, a 3D based CAD package and it's um, focused around manufacturing and mechanical design, although again, not limited to, to that space. Um, in essence, it's a parametric 3D modeling tool, so it can be used for any type of, of 3D modeling. Um, it's incredibly powerful, um, very robust, very user friendly. Um, and it too has some specific tool sets uh, that can be used for things like sheet metal, frame designs, piping, um, electrical designs. Um, and there's even some you know, visualization tools like rendering and simulation inside of Inventor as well. It also produces uh, documentation in 2D from the 3D geometry in the familiar DWG format that everybody's used to with uh, AutoCAD. So Autodesk uh, Vault Professional is a product data management software. So it's where we um, store all of our CAD data um, and not limited to CAD data. It stores any file type similar to uh, Windows Explorer, but a lot more powerful. We've got a lot of searching functionality inside of Vault. <clears throat> um, easy administration integrates directly with Autodesk design tools that you'll see shortly, like AutoCAD and Inventor. Um, and helps connect internal and external teams as well. Uh, shortly, I'll show you uh, a demonstration of how to utilize existing data from AutoCAD directly inside of Inventor and vice versa. So a lot of clients have legacy data sitting in AutoCAD they've accumulated over the years, probably in a 2D format, rather than having to redo all of that work from scratch, um, we can utilize those files directly inside of the inventor environment to recreate um, that information in a 3D format. <clears throat> Vice versa, we can take uh, modeling data uh, from inventor, and put it back into AutoCAD for documentation purposes. So this facilitates uh, possibly larger teams where you've got a team that's doing uh, a lot of the design and the 3D modeling uh, work. And then other, team, other teams that take that data and do the uh, documentation. <clears throat> so it can speed up workflows. It also is a way of helping you transition from 2D to 3D. Uh, if you're not familiar with in Inventor and you've been in an AutoCAD background, um, it can just help alleviate that learning curve between the two uh, by using both products hand in hand. Um, integration of Vault Professional into the Autodesk packages. So today I'm just going to have a look at AutoCAD and Inventor, uh, but it does integrate seamlessly with uh, several other packages um, like Plan 3D, Advanced Steel, <coughs> um, 3D Map, and it also integrates with uh, Office packages as well. So applications like PowerPoint. See there's a Autodesk Vault tab there. Ability to log in 
uh, to that. Check files in and out. Uh, and the bottom one there is Outlook. So for your emails. So Vault can even store any correspondence related directly to a project um, <clears throat> straight inside the Vault application and any other supporting documentation as well. So certainly not limited just to CAD data. There's uh, three versions of Vault. Uh, Vault Basic is um, included with uh, your product um, design collection. Um, and you can see an example of some of the other applications, the Vault application interfaces with. So things like PNID, AutoCAD Mechanical, uh, Advanced Steel, <clears throat> and there are others. Um, obviously, I've truncated those. So Vault Basics, basic design file management. So we're talking uh, check in, check out, ability to um, <clears throat> search for properties and metadata against files, and really just using it as a file store for. Um, our CAD data and other supporting documentation. As I mentioned, it's included with your subscription to product design manufacturing collection. Um, so essentially it's a, a free version, um, not sold separately, but it gives you a good overview um, or a, a taste for how Vault works if um, you wanted to try that. Vault work groups, the next level up. <clears throat> uh, this then starts allowing for us to be able to manage design tasks and revisions, um, enforcing metadata standards on, on files, on save, et cetera. Uh, and then we step up to Vault Professional, where we may have uh, multiple sites in different locations that need to collaborate um, it's an enterprise level application, so we can then start interfacing it with other applications like ERP, CRM systems, uh, SaaS, SharePoint, et cetera, um, and import and output data from Vault directly into those other applications as well. Uh, some of the automation inside of Vault Professional allows us to track changes uh, directly inside the Vault application. Uh, keeps history, design history of our files, allows us to track revisions, all directly as we're working with the, uh, the files inside the CAD applications. Uh, we can also um, automate repetitive design tasks. So things like creating PDFs. So how many hours a day would you spend maybe creating PDFs of a particular project where we can now let Vault do that for us automatically in the background while we're working. Uh, design reuse, being able to copy designs that we've already done and reuse those designs without affecting the original design content. And other functions like creating DXF exports of um, maybe sheet metal outputs and things like that. So I'm just going to jump into <clears throat> some of the other applications now. So first we'll have a look at have a look at AutoCAD. So you can see I've got a Vault tab up in the ribbon. I'm currently logged into the Vault application. And now, uh, actually, before I go through AutoCAD, let's have a look at the Vault application itself. So it's a very similar and familiar layout uh, to Windows Explorer. I've got a, a project browser on the left hand side. And that allows me to. Uh, 
store and, and search for the files that I'm I'm using and I'm looking for. And as I said, it's uh, ability to store any file type. So you can see I've got various file types in here. Um, being able to search for files quickly and easily. So typically in a Windows Explorer environment, you're having to rely on folder names or names of files to be able to find what you're looking for. In Vault, we're using the metadata associated to the files. So we've got the ability to assign properties to files and give those properties values. And they become what we use to find files within the Vault. It's also a very uh, secure storage point for our data. Uh, everything's controlled based on permissions and user logins. So I'm currently logged in as administrator, um, but I can set up groups, I can set up individual users and only give those users or groups access to certain areas or certain files of the vault uh, based on their roles or permissions that they've been assigned to. So that includes uh, any external vendors that need access to my data as well. Um, not being able to access sensitive files. So the uh, file that I'm going to be working on today is um, <clears throat> make this a bit bigger. So go cut. Um, so let me get that thumbnail back. It's a little go kart assembly. <clears throat> so I've got some existing geometry inside of AutoCAD that I need to convert into 2D, uh, sorry, 3D in the inventor. So I've got that file sitting here. So as you can see, there's no um, 3D geometry to this, it's just a, a flat 2D flat 2D drawing. Okay, but I want to use the, the profiles in here to be able to create this uh, object as a 3D element. <coughs> so I'm going to switch over to Inventor. Um, to create that part. <clears throat> so I'm just going to start a sketch. Those of you that are familiar with Inventor will recognize the process. And from here, I'm going to import an AutoCAD based drawing. So Inventor also uses the DWG file type. So I can open DWGs in both Inventor and AutoCAD. So there's my profile that I want to bring in. Okay, from here I can uh, I can be fairly selective about what I want to select and what I want to import into my inventor environment. That's probably, probably get away with only bringing part of it in. And as you can see, uh, you can turn off layers, et cetera, for, for what I actually want to include in this selection. I'm going to import that 2D geometry there into my sketch. And then we'll use that to create a 3D model. So just reusing these profiles that I've already drawn in AutoCAD.
Okay, so as you can see, it didn't uh, didn't take very long, and I've converted my two D existing legacy uh, data from AutoCAD into an Inventor um, model, three D model. I'm just going to save that file there. Now, for those of you that haven't seen uh, this dialog box before, this is um, a plugin for Vault. Uh, inventor in AutoCAD called Data Standards that comes with the Vault Professional and Workgroup applications. And this allows me to have some control um, over the input of the metadata on save of a file. So what that means is I don't end up saving a file into the Vault, just called part one, for example with no properties and no metadata associated to it. Um, by actually filling out this form, it means that when the file is checked into the vault, it's already got the correct uh, metadata associated to it. So I can find it at a later stage. I'm just going to put some additional metadata in here. Okay, so now that that's uh, filled out with um, the information I want to save against the file, <clears throat> as soon as I hit OK, it's going to check that file into the Vault database for me. If I come across to my Vault application, I can run a search on Sprocket. And there you can see the file is sitting there. Um, the original 2D file from AutoCAD is above it. Okay, and it's already got all of the metadata that I input when I save the file in Inventor. So I can find it quickly, I can find it easily. I don't have to know where in Vault that file lives. In fact, if I go to the top level uh, of Vault, you can see I've got no folder structure there at this point. If I wanted to find um, anything related to a wheel, okay, very quickly and in fact almost instantaneously, it's returning the results there for me on any components that are associated to. Um, the term wheel. So we can also <clears throat> save these searches to come back to later. So rather than having to search for wheel each time I needed to uh, find these components, I can save that search. And the ability of uh, being able to do that is, um, means that I can reuse those searches directly within my uh, other CAD applications as well. So if I come back to Inventor here, I can open my assemblies and all my CAD data directly through a Vault interface within Inventor. And as you can see there, my saved searches from Vault are shown here in Inventor. So I can click on my steering components search and I'm easily able to get to uh, any of those filtered searches.
So as I mentioned, we can also uh, take our data from Inventor and go back the other way. So this is an AutoCAD 2D drawing, just a, a blank layout sheet there. So directly from inside, I'll just move that, there we go. Directly from inside AutoCAD, I can place models from Inventor. It's tied into the Inventor project file. So I've got access to the exact same data I'm using in Inventor directly inside of AutoCAD. It's just a case of selecting the model that I want to insert. <clears throat> and very similar to placing views in Inventor. I can place 2D views of my 3D geometry uh, directly into AutoCAD. Now these views are also associated back to the model. So what that means is if the model changes inside of um, Inventor, it's a, there's a direct link between the 2D drawing in the AutoCAD and the 3D Inventor model. So my views will update. Um, it also allows me to um, not only share the workload between documentation and 3D design, um, but it also gives me access back to the annotation tools I'm familiar with, with um, AutoCAD, um, maybe while I'm getting up to speed with my inventor application, okay, or before transitioning all my 2D documentation over to Inventor. And so as I suggested it, can help with that learning curve, moving from 2D into 3D. And again, fully integrated with Vault. So if I'm saving this file, my uh, data standards has come back up again. <clears throat> Just assign a drawing number there. So Vault can even handle our file numbering. Um, how the files are saved, etc. Okay, now that file will be now sitting inside a vault. <clears throat> and there it is there. Now, uh, other features uh, we have inside of Vault, uh, things like document control, uh, revision control, um, <clears throat> finding the, the history, uh, modeling history of our files. So if I click on a file here, you see at the bottom I've got a uh, history of when the file was created, what state the file's in, uh, who created the file, etc. And some of these files um, may have you know, a, a bigger history than, than other files, depends on how many times they've been opened and saved, for example. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these are not been opened before. <clears throat> So this one here has got a few versions. Okay, and there may have been some uh, design changes between different users uh, from version to version, but I'm not saving multiple copies of my design every time that I, I make a change. So traditionally in something like Windows Explorer, you'd probably have to do a save as. Um, we don't have to do that inside of Vault. Every time I change the file, make an edit, and check the file back into Vault. Vault's taking care of that history for me. And it's tracking all those changes, tracking that history. And at any point, I can get back to a previous version. 
Okay. So being able to uh, reuse that data. Um, we've also got control over our design process within Vault. So I've got a, a couple of drawings here. So maybe let's have a look at this one. I'll just open this one in Inventor so you can see what we're looking at. So this is the floor tray of the go-kart. So it's sheet metal. Um, it's got a flat pattern associated to it. So typical uh, output for flat pattern and drawings uh, might be a PDF of the drawing and then a DXF um, of the flat pattern for laser cutting, for example. So um, traditionally, well, we would be creating those two exports as a manual process, okay? Um, but we can actually use the features of Vault to handle those exports for us. So I'm doing that by uh, transitioning these files inside of Vault through what we call a life cycle or a design workflow, basically. So currently the files are in a work in progress state. That means that I have access to open the files, check the files out, edit the files, et cetera, as many times as I need to um, until the file is, is correct. Once I'm satisfied as a designer that the file is correct, I can then transition the file to somebody else uh, to review that design. Um, once uh, the review process has taken place, then the files either uh, released or um, sent back to a work in progress state for editing. Um, on the transition between the states in the workflow, uh, Vault allows me to set up some tasks to be able to um, perform during that transition. So for the, the drawing um, and the part that goes with it, I'm going to transition these in the workflow from a work in progress state to a review state. <clears throat> now what's going to happen uh, in this transition is I'll get a PDF created of the drawing. And I'm also going to get a DXF of the part file because it's a sheet metal part in Inventor. So these are just two basic examples. Um, so in the background, those tasks are being handled by a Vault job processor, which is a, a secondary um, application to the Vault that allows us to basically automate any repetitive process that you might have. So we can do things like watermarking PDFs, sending email notifications of uh, review and release processes, et cetera. <clears throat> There's really no limit to what automation can be achieved with the job processor. So I'm just using a PDF and a DXF as an example. So I'll just give it a, a couple of seconds to uh, create those files. So just while we're waiting for that, I'll just show you the, uh, this is the job key for the job processor. So it's actually, you can see it's um, in the process there of processing the DXF. Um, then it'll move on to creating a, a PDF. So if I refresh my, Vault there. So I've got a PDF. If I open that. Okay, so that's exactly what I was seeing in Inventor. So that's okay. 
and then a, a DXF here of the floor plate. Now I'll open that in AutoCAD and we'll just check that that's all right. And I'm going to open that directly from the vault. And I'll find it by searching floor tray. Okay, there it is there. So very easy to find my files. I didn't have to know where it was or what it was called or anything like that. Um, I won't check it out because I'm not editing it. Okay, and then we've got a DXF output of the uh, sheet metal flat pattern from Inventor. Okay. So I could do that to um, several files at a time. Obviously, I only transitioned uh, two files there through the, the life cycle in bulk. But imagine if you had hundreds of files that you needed PDFs or DXFs for in a project. Um, you would be able to transition all those files at once through Vault and Vault would handle the processing of the creation of those file types for you while you continue to work on your designs or, or other projects. Okay, so it takes a lot of that, those manual steps out. <clears throat> and again, um, we can help with automating any repetitive process that you might have inside of Vault. Um, one of the other highly powerful features we've got in Vault is um, what we call copy design. So typically when we're in a package like Inventor or even AutoCAD for that matter, um, there's usually some crossover between designs and uh, projects. But being able to reuse something you've already done in the past that's similar but um, needs to be changed, it's a little bit different. So <clears throat> directly from the vault, I'll just do a search here, or maybe I'll use my save search for real components. Uh, let's pick on this uh, steering wheel. Let's go with, actually I'll do a search for my rear axle. There it is there, my axle assembly. So I may want a copy of this design. Um, it's just the rear axle with the wheels and the, the sprocket hub, et cetera, on it. I may want to copy that design to make a version that's longer or shorter or different wheels, et cetera. Okay, so um, there could be several components that make up that assembly or several hundred components. Um, that task inside of Inventor is quite difficult to achieve because of the links and relationships between the files in an assembly. Inside of Vault, it's simply a right click to do a copy design. And then from here, I'm just gonna copy that assembly to a different folder. Uh, I'll just put that in a, a webinar folder there. And I've got the ability to decide what components of that assembly I'm also going to copy. So maybe that I'm not copying everything. Maybe some of the components um, like standard nuts and bolts, washers, etc., might be reused multiple times across designs. So I have the ability to choose exactly what I want to copy out of this assembly. In this example, I'm just going to copy everything. Um, I'm going to take out
and I'll set my prefix name here. Sorry, I'm just going to change my numbering scheme. And let's go with prefix out and a set of numbering scheme. So obviously I don't want the same same numbers as the original assembly. So I'm going to let Vault renumber the copied assembly for me. Uh, so you can see there the file name of the original files and the destination name is uh, automatically generated in this case. So I'm just going to hit execute copy there. And we, during this process, we can copy and predefine properties of files, etc., as well. So that's been copied. I'm going to close the copy design window. <clears throat> and over in the webinar folder, I've got an exact copy of that assembly. Um, the history of the file there tells me where the copy, uh, sorry, where the file was copied from. Okay, in the comments, uh, all of the metadata has been copied across between the files as well. So now I've got a completely independent version of that assembly that I can now edit and make changes to without affecting the original one. Um, and as you saw, it was a very quick copy process, um, which would have taken a lot longer uh, without well, professional. So that um, that concludes the webinar for uh, today. If you'd like to head over to the ATK Technologies uh, website to our vets page, you can view our other upcoming webinars. Uh, if you need any further information, you're welcome to contact us here at ATK at info at atktechnologies.com. And I'd um, like to thank you for joining us today and being part of this webinar. Hopefully you got a, a bit of an insight into what Bolt um, does or what it can actually do and maybe how it can help your uh, processes in the future. So thank you for coming.